Hello and welcome to module nine, quality of service concepts. All right, please don't forget to take your notes and submit them when you're ready. All right, so when we're talking about quality of service, we're gonna talk about the network transmission quality first, and then we'll take it from there. So, <clears throat> when you have a network, when you have network traffic going through a hub, uh, such as a router or um, as a router experiences traffic, the data is queued, which means you're, they're placing it on a hold until the previous packets have been processed. So if there's a lot of traffic going into the router, so what they do, they queue it. This is like the waiting station. And then they, they got to send it one at a time. That means there's a delay. So <clears throat> we have to prioritize the, the traffic. If there's a lot of traffic, then the queue gets get, can get filled, right? And the incoming traffic is dropped. Then all that incoming traffic will be dropped. Dropping incoming tra uh, in incoming packets of real time communication protocols are unacceptable, of course. Therefore, one way quality of service can help us by classifying the data into multiple queues. For example. If the incoming, if this is voice over IP, when they come in, when there's traffic, we put them in a queue, which is a memory, a buffer, where it says high priority. They'll be the first one to go. Uh, media priority, go in here, and then low priority, go on the bottom. So if there's traffic, all right, so we, we could do that. That's what that's called quality of service. <clears throat> so we can maintain the high quality that voice over IP needed without any packets being lost and dropped. All right, um, so bandwidth congestions, typically what happens is you can, at the points of aggregation, so this the switch when this is going towards the default gateway, right? That's where the bottlenecking is. Or you have mismatch speed. Somebody's transmitting at 1,000 megabits per second and he's receiving at 100. You gotta buffer it, right? Or LAN to WAN. You got a gigabit ethernet going on a 64-bit, you know, leased line. So all of that, that creates delays, right? So you have what? We have something called, you need to know bandwidth, which is the maximum amount of data that can be transmitted on the wire. Congestions means traffic. There's a lot of high volume of data. It could be voice, it could be anything. That's what I mean by data. It's trying to get through. Delay is latency, propagation, uh, latency means propagation delay, right? Um, then we got jitter. Jitter is the variable delay. So, for example, if <clears throat> if you show up, if let's say the whole class shows up ten minutes late every day, every day we go to class, we're always ten minutes late. That's a delay. We can adjust to that easily. But if we have uh, jitter, which means you know some days we're late five minutes, other days are 10, other days are 15, some days we're not even late. So that's a little bit more difficult to, to do. So what we do is we put them all in a buffer and we send, then we send them out one at a time in a, in a nicely synchronized manner if there's a jitter, all right? So um, <clears throat> RTP product, packet lost is unacceptable. Of course, it all depends on what you're talking about. So here's what I want you to write. RTP, which is the real-time protocol, when it receives jitter packets, it holds it in a queue. Queue, remember, when I say the word queue, I mean buffer. Then transmits them in a steady manner. That's what our main responsibility is. All right, so please write that down. <clears throat> if jitter is very high, then packets may be dropped. The digital signal processor chip, which almost every device has, every communication device has, can predict what the lost packets is going, what the lost packet is, and can predict what it is. So, for example, if there's a lost packet, uh, he, he knows the, the the packet that left before and the packet that is after, and he can figure out what the packet in between is. Um, they can figure out up to you know if the less less than one percent loss, you're pretty good, especially for voice. And even for a video, but if you have a lot of packets lost, it becomes very difficult to predict what the what the lost packets are. DSP won't be able to do that for you. Then you gotta uh, then the quality becomes extremely poor. You gotta disconnect and 
hopefully reconnect again. All right. Um, so packet loss is important. Let's take a look at traffic characteristics. Um, according to the Cisco Ver <coughs> Visual Networking Index, VNI, as it says right here, 70% of the traffic in, 19, in 2017 is going to be video. And it's going to go up to 82%. That's something probably good to know, not need to know. So write that down. Uh, by 22, we're going to have 82% of the traffic. It's probably by now, I'll bet. Most of the traffic online are videos, and probably most of it is YouTube videos, if I'm not mistaken. And, of course, the growing mobile device videos, mobile devices, that's growing to close to 61% by 2022. All right, so the types of demands, and these videos require uh, quality of service. They want to go first. So if you're downloading a file and watching a video at the first time, at the same time, especially if it's real time downloading video, you want the video to come straight to your device and and then the downloading of the file will wait, right? And if you're talking, it's the same thing. So for voice, please take the snippet down here. This is important. So when it comes to voice, you want to have a smooth, benign, drop sensitive, delay sensitive, and UPD priority. So the most important thing is you want to have jitter should be no more than 30 milliseconds in delay. And the packet loss should has to be less than 1%, like I said to you earlier. Traffic requires at least 30 kilobits of bandwidth, which is not a big deal. So um, that's why really nowadays voice, is, voice over IP is not, you know, you can easily get that. <laughs> you know, we're, we're, if you're connecting to 100 megabits per second, you know, 30 kilobits is nothing, right? When it comes to video, uh, <clears throat> the loss is even less. So you're talking about even if you get to 1%, you're going to have a really bad resolution. You'll get these blocks on your TV, for example. Um, so the delay, the latency is a little bit, it can tolerate a little bit more latency and jitter, but the packet loss is a big problem. Um, you need up to 20 megabits. If you're down, if you're streaming, um, by the way, take a snippet of this too. For, want to forget to tell you that so uh <clears throat> if you're streaming an mp4 video you require 9.8 megabits per second if it's M mpeg2 which is the hd um format you need about 19.8 19 point something megabits per second so mp4 requires half the bandwidth that an mpeg2 would would, would need so that's why a lot of the videos online YouTube videos and QuickTime with Apple, they're all really MP4 videos. Um, <clears throat> another thing I want you to real to know that write down the ports, 554 for RSTP. If you ever block this port on your router, you won't be able to stream videos, right? All right, when it comes to data, data is not a problem. You can, you can do whatever you want with data. You, it can wait, in other words. Right, so please write down. I mean, take a snapshot of this or snip it. Right, uh, the characteristics it can, it can be smooth, nice download, or can burst, benign, greedy, all of those goodies. Right, and uh, you can have either <coughs> interactive applications, maybe you need priority, non interactive. It's, that's probably, that's the least significant of, uh, least critical, let's say, right? When it comes to downloading files. All right, let's take a look at the queuing algorithms. There are four that you should know. So I want you to write all four of them and we'll be discussing each one of them separately. So let's get to that immediately. Let's go to the FIFO first, uh, first in, first out. And when it comes to FIFO, Here's what you need to write about FIFOs. One queue, one buffer, and forwards packets in order that they are arrival. They are arriving. First come, first serve. First in, first out. That's what it means. So when the data comes in, they are buffered. They wait. And when you, if you first come in, you're going out. There's really no priority here, right? FIFOs. A lot of devices have to have FIFOs. Uh, the switch have FIFOs, FIFOs to allow 100 megabits 
to connect to 100 megabits, 1,000 megabits to connect to 100 megabit um, ports, and so on. Uh, so this is really, there's no quality of service with iPhones, uh, but you need them because otherwise, if I'm trying to send data to somebody who is slow, uh, he's going to be overwhelmed. So it's buffered to make sure that the receiver can handle the data, then you start sending out data. Then you got the weight fair queuing. So with the weight fair queuing, here's what you need to write down about that. It's an automated scheduling method that provides fair bandwidth allocation to all network traffic. So um, it uses priority or weights, quote unquote, to identify traffic, then determines the amount of bandwidth it needs. So what that means is when you come in, depending on this is we're, we're, now we're um, giving we're going to give them priority or weights depending on who you are. So depending on if you have video, I'm going to give it a high priority, for example. If your voice, a little bit less priority. If your data, interactive data, maybe you're, uh, you'll be the blue, you'll be in here. And if you are just regular communication data, then you're already down here. All right, so then they'll look at you and you say, okay, you require a certain amount of bandwidth, and they'll give it to you as you transmit. Everybody gets a fair share, right? Maybe not good, not as good as we need it. But how does it do that, by, by the way? It looks at your IP address, your MAC address, and your port, and the type of service label that is stamped on your packet to decide where do you go. If you're a high, medium, normal, or low, right? Depending on your classification. And then we'll give you your bandwidth to get out. Uh, now we have class-based weight uh, fair queuing. So in that, so write the following down. Traffic classes are defined based on matched criteria, including, this is in addition to your IP address, your MAC address, your protocol, and your 2OS, we add a little bit more. For example, your, we'll add an access list, input in, what input interfaces you're coming from, um, and then we'll put you into classes. Uh, so if you are from the, you know, if you are a video, let's say, and you're coming from a specific location, from the administration, you're probably going to have class one. This is the most important. So if videos are coming from a specific subnet, they're going to go first. A video that's coming from um, the sales, maybe a less, maybe they'll be placed in a different class. So it all depends. So we'll add, I, you know, we'll, we'll take a look at your IP address, your MAC address, the priority numbers and uh, and depending on the priority, if it's a video, depending on where it's coming from, what subnet, so we have to write an access list for, the, for that. And then when once we place them in the classes, then the WFQ will take class one first, the most important, and starts giving them enough power, uh, bandwidth to be transmitted. So he'll sets up the bandwidth for, um, for the data that got to go into class one, then he goes to class two and so on, right? So this is good, right? All right, then we have the low latency queuing, LLQ, the fourth one. Write the following down. LL2, LLQ brings strict priority queuing, PQ, uh, to the CB, to the one previously, the CBWQ. So LLQ allows delay-sensitive packets such as voice to be sent first before anything else. So in addition to all of those classes, I'll have one, one, uh, one queue, this is very, very, very important. You know, this is like for emergencies, right? Even though everybody's in their classes, if a packet comes in as like an emergency, he goes into this emergency. So no matter who are classified in here, the emergency ones, the priority queue goes first, right? So typically voice is in here because voice is extremely sensitive when it comes to um, quality of service. We want, we don't want any delay. We, want, we don't want any jitter. We don't want any packet loss with voice. So if a voice packet comes in, it's going to go into the priority queue, and they always go first. This has to be emptied out before any of the other classes. All right, so those are the four. So please write those down. And um, on the next video, we will continue with QoS models. So write everything down and submit them, and I'll see you on the next video.